Now then, you know you've made it as a company when people start using your name as a verb. We hoover at home, Xerox at work, and now in cyberspace, we Google. And that's helped it become the number one brand in the world by value, more than $86 billion. The Brand Z survey ranks Google ahead of such household names as General Electric, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, and one that the West may not be so familiar with. At number five, it's the world's biggest mobile phone operator, China Mobile. Google's reign as brand supreme is pretty good going for a company founded by two students in a garage just ten years ago. Today, the company whose official, whose rather unofficial motto is Don't Be Evil, is now the world's leading search engine with 108 million unique visitors each month. We'll meet you now. To discuss this a little bit further, it's Jonathan Gabay, founder of Brand Forensics. Good to see you. What Good makes a super you. brand, Jonathan? What makes a super brand is a brand that means something to everyone. But with so many people, how can you be something to everyone? You see, brands are all about perceptions. It's about saying, here's a promise, but not just saying, here's a promise for the sake of it, but delivering on it. And that's what Google is doing. And is there real problems about being number one? I remember reading something a, a few months ago about Google not too happy yeah. by people using the verb to Google. Well, the only trouble with to use a word, to, to use a verb like to Google, that just says that means searching. But Google, as a brand, wants to be more than just a search engine. That's why they're going into things like mobile technology uh, and stuff like that. So they actually want to be a ubiquitous brand rather than just a, a one-trick pony. And the problem is, if you aren't number one, it's pretty tough, I would imagine, to stay there. And it wouldn't take much to knock you off. Oh, absolutely. You see, the thing is, is that when you're king of the castle, everyone, as you just said, wants to knock you off. So what you've got, there are some people actually that say that being number two is better than being number one. Because number one, you're having to defend, 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 whereas number two, you're attacking. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting place to be as a brand. There comes a point maybe where people start to rebel against the brand? Oh, absolutely. In fact, talking about being number one, right? you could be number one. In fact, there's, a, there's, some, there's some in the list here which are number one, such as petrol companies. But the thing is, being number one in their own, in their own field is fine, but people don't like it because there's a new uh, expression which is greenwashing. And greenwashing is when people look at petrol companies as brands and they say, yeah, it's number one, but I don't quite trust it. You see, it's not about being biggest. It's not about being best. It's about being better than the entire rest in more ways than just your core stuff. And very briefly, most of the brands that we know, like Xerox, like Kleenex, like Hoover, they're British, they're American brands. Yeah. Is that going to uh, stay with us for much longer? I'm afraid not, because as it was reported just the last hour, China Mobile has seen a surge in their profits, and they've come in at number five. And in fact, there are no less than seven brands from Asia who are in uh, the top brand list. So that's where it's going. Interesting stuff. Jonathan, goodbye. Thank you Anytime. very much indeed.